Hey guys, Rick here. Hang on. Just need to verify that I am actually live. Looks like it. Durability in modern workers table Hang on. For the past five years, the T2 Workman has established a new standard for typing. Awesome. We are ready. <laughs> cool. Sorry. Had to make sure we had that event back in June that crashed on me, and I never know. If I'm going to be live or not. So everybody can hear me okay and see me okay, hopefully. Let me get in the middle of the screen here. Okay, welcome. So today we are going to do just a short little workshop. I don't have um, I don't have intentions on going super long with this one. We'll, we'll kind of see how things go. We'll, we should have plenty of time for uh, some questions and things like that. We're basically going to talk about what we can be planting in September, which is almost right now. We're almost to September. So um, while we're kind of waiting, we had um, 160 people that pre-registered for this event, so which is awesome. One of our, our best pre-registers ever. So we'll kind of hang out here for a minute. We've already got, it looks like, 44 people that are here. So while we're hanging out, tell me where you're from, what your garden zone is, and what was your summer garden like? So ours was a little bit rough this year. Um, we have had hot temperatures since early June. Like we had our first 100 the first week of June. And uh, I don't even know what the number was. We had we tied the record for a number of days over 100 in July. We also set a new record for a number of days over 90 uh, in a summer. I mean, it's just crazy. and. Then it finally cooled off a little bit, and now we're back. They're going to they're saying that it's Thursday and Friday it's going to be 100 degrees again. So I don't know what's up with this year. Which overall that kind of made our garden struggle a little bit. I feel like our fruit trees and our fruit bushes maybe have struggled more than anything else in our garden this year. Uh, just kind of uh, you know have have struggled to you know progress and move along. So um, hopefully things will cool off and we'll, we'll still have a little bit of time to ripen up the last of the raspberries and get the potatoes done and hopefully get some more tomatoes ripened too. All right, well, it looks like we've got a great group of people here. We're already up to 105 people. Um, zone 5, Zone 9B and in the hundreds, Syracuse, Utah from Portugal. All right, um, we've got Kentucky, Delaware, Kansas, um, just harvested some potatoes for supper. Eastern Ontario, Canada, great. Connecticut, Oklahoma, Texas, DC, Missouri, Weber, Utah, that's not far from us, Illinois. All right, awesome. Okay, well, we are up to 122 people. So I think that we'll kind of move forward here. So here's kind of my intention for today. Um, we're going to talk about what to plant in September. And I do these these videos every month. I thought I'd do it as a live this month. I'll probably still do a pre-recorded video too um, because that reaches kind of a different audience as well. But I thought, you know, let's, let's do a live this time and we can talk about what we can get planted. So I'm going to try and keep this as broad as I can because, the, you know, I, I, just from what I'm looking at, we've got people all the way from zones four to zones nine here that are commenting and um, so I'm, I'm going to give you some target dates and things like that, that that will still help you but but know that if you live in zones four five six and even zone seven we're on the the last chance here for September so you you need to be thinking about getting fall crops in right away uh, if if you want to actually get things harvested now if you're in zones eight nine and ten You've obviously got some time left to go, but for those of us that have the colder winters, we kind of need to, to get busting along here. So we're going to talk about uh, three different or four different things today. We're going to talk about timing. We're going to talk about planting root crops and what root crops we can still sneak in. We're going to talk about leafy greens, and then we're going to talk about the cabbage family. Then we did do a prize drawing, and so um, we'll we'll do the prize drawing, and then we will do a quick Q and A. So. Just so that you know, um, the right now we've got 125 people in here. The feed is going crazy. There's no way that I can pay attention to the feed. So my wife AJ is upstairs and she is watching for your questions. 
But we're going to go, I'm going to go probably about 15 minutes on talking about this. And so if you want to hold off on your questions until I get done with that, then you can ask your questions. That'll make it a little bit easier for both of both AJ and I to to follow through. And she's gonna she's gonna post your questions here on my other computer. Um, so if you want to hold off on your questions until we get towards the end, um, and like I say, I'm gonna go about 15 minutes today uh, on the teaching thing, and then we'll we'll do our prize drawing, and and uh, then we can do some questions. So okay, all right. So first off, I did want to thank our sponsors. So Honest Seed Company came through again. They gave us two $25 gift certificates. And then the Gardening Academy, which is actually one of my companies, is sponsoring this as well. And we're going to give away a um, fabric row cover uh, to you guys for that one. So we've got three prizes that we're giving away today. And those are our sponsors, Honest Seed Company, which is awesome. There's a link in the description down below uh, for you that you, can, um, that you can check out for Honest Seed Company. Uh, they are just a great company and you should go check them out. So we'll, we'll give away some prizes here in just a little bit, okay? So for those of you that don't know who I am, wow, we're up to 150 viewers already. That's awesome. Uh, so my name is Rick Stone. I love to garden. I am the principal author of Our Stony Acres and I kind of chose today to do this, this uh, workshop just because today is actually the anniversary of our website. So 2011, August 29th, 2011, we posted our very first article on Our Stony Acres. So 11 years ago now uh, that we started the website and uh, it's been a fun ride and it started out just as a little blog, uh, kind of a project that I was doing for my Master Gardener program and uh, has turned into just a, a fun uh, thing that I, I get to do now and teach people in a YouTube channel with 100 and almost 20,000 followers. It's pretty cool. I'm also the founder of the Gardening Academy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I am a graduate of the Utah State University uh, Master Gardener Program, and my wife and I have been gardening here in Utah. We're in kind of north central Utah, just south of Salt Lake City. Uh, we have been gardening for 25 plus years, plus our parents gardened, and so we gardened with them and our grandparents, and so we're, we come from uh, long time gardening stock, and we enjoy and love gardening a lot. Okay, so that's me. <clears throat> For those of you that want to get connected with us, uh, there are links down in the description. We're obviously on uh, YouTube. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, guys, click the subscribe button right now uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on Facebook and we've got a fun little group over there that you can go join and we are on Instagram as well. Uh, and our, our Instagram following is growing quite a bit. We've jumped up to about 6,500 followers there, and so I'd love to have you come and join us over there. And then, of course, our website is OurStonyAcres.com. So um, make sure that you go connect with us on social. Okay, so let's talk about what do we got? 162 people here. Awesome, guys. Welcome. Glad to have you guys here. Um, this is fun. I like having big groups, so this is pretty awesome. Okay, so... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk first about timing for September. And I'm going to go I'm going to jump right to the bottom thing on the list. You need to hurry if you are in zones 4, 5, 6 and 7, okay? <clears throat> Everything that I'm going to tell you that you can plant right now, you need to plant right now. Like late August first of September is when you need to be busting this stuff out because we're going to really start running out of time fairly quickly. So with the root crops, those are going to be the ones that, that are going to be the most difficult for you to, to still grow at this time of year. You really need about six to eight weeks before your first frost date in order to get those root crops growing, uh, which, you know, for some of us, that's already passed. You know, our first frost is usually about October 1st. And so I already obviously have my root crops in. But some of you, your, your frost date, your first frost date is going to slide into mid-October, first part of November, and so you probably still have some time to get going, but it's really short time. You, you need to get planting right away, okay? That's root crops. Now with the leafy greens that we're going to talk about, those have a little bit more flexibility. And also the nice thing about leafy greens is, is that, that you can harvest them about any stage. So you can start planting those now and you can do it all the way up until about two weeks before your first frost date. The brassica family 
you, you need to, those are again probably about now that you need to get planting those and those are going to come from transplants. We'll talk more about that as well. But that's kind of our basic timing here guys uh, that we need to be looking at <clears throat> for planting in September right away. If you're watching the replay of this video and it's September 25th, you're probably too late <laughs> unless you live in zone 5 or I mean in zone 8. So um, again, those, those colder zones 4, 5, 6, 7, um, now is the time to get these last um, plantings for fall in. And if you don't get them in soon, then they're not going to mature in time. Okay. All right. So let's talk here. And, and by the way, guys, um, this would be planting directly in the garden or in containers or raised beds, any of these. The, the timing is going to be pretty much the same for you. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the different crops that we can still be planting this time of year. Root crops I put first because you have got to hurry on these. And for many of us, the time has passed, but there are still some of you, especially if you've got a little bit later frost, uh, that, that will be able to, to get some things planted. So four crops that you can plant here, carrots, turnips, beets, and radishes. Now, carrots, turnips, and beets, six to eight weeks before your first frost date is, is kind of the drop dead date for you. So mine have been in for about three weeks already and they're up about yay so tall. Um, <clears throat> but if you, you know, if your, your frost dates a little bit later, then you still have some flexibility. Now with turnips and beets, you could still plant now, but all you're going to get is greens. Okay. So, so if, you know, if you're, if you're within like four weeks of your frost date, you could plant, but you're probably not going to get roots. You're probably just going to get tops, okay? Which is fine. Now, radishes are a little bit different because they are such quick growers. So your radishes, you can you can hold off. Like right now, we're going to have 100 degrees again this week, which again is crazy. Um, in September, it's going to be the first of September. But um, we want you want to hold off on radishes because radishes do not like the heat. And so wait until that heat has broken a little bit. You've really got, you know, you can kind of target four weeks before your first frost on those radishes and you could go all the way up to you know maybe two weeks or, or or even right about your first frost date just recognize that with all of these root crops but especially with radishes one of the things that we're going to be dealing with is declining time or i'm sorry declining daylight so your spring daylight is going up and the days are getting longer. In the fall, the days are getting shorter. And so our maturity dates are going to stretch out. And especially this time of the year, uh, they're, they're really going to stretch out. So radishes that might normally be done in 30 days are going to be more like 45 to 60 days, just because the days are getting so much shorter that we have to, you know, we kind of have to deal with that longer time frame. So don't get discouraged when they're not growing. Just, uh, just be patient. Um, and it is going to take longer for all of those. And that's part of the reason why <clears throat> if you're, you're bumping up against your frost date and you live far up in the north, so for example in Canada, even if you're in like a zone 5 or a zone 6, <clears throat> you may be out of time for carrots, turnips, and beets just because you don't have enough daylight left. Your days are getting shorter and shorter. So. Um, this time of year, it's really kind of in flux a lot. Uh, the further south you live, the better luck you're going to have at getting those, those crops to grow. But radishes will definitely uh, do well. The other ones, it kind of just depends on where you live. Okay. All right. So leafy greens uh, hurry, but there's less pressure on these because all of our leafy greens grow um, or are, are harvestable at any stage, right? So, so you can have baby lettuce, baby spinach, arugula, Swiss chard, you know, all of those you can have at the baby stage and still harvest them. So you've got less pressure with those. Lettuce, spinach, arugula, Swiss chard, um, all four to six weeks before your first frost, which should be within your time frame. Um, also other leafy greens that we have here are going to be kale, endive, Asian greens, all of the Asian greens, so bok choy, tot soy, and mosh um, are all going to be, uh, you know, plantable at this time of the year. Now, for those of you that don't know what mosh is, mosh is, an, is a, a fun little plant that you can grow 
and I just thought of this, I should have put a picture of mosh. That's lettuce. <laughs> I should have put some mosh on, on this. Mosh is a, a fun plant that you can grow and it loves this time of year. In fact, you'll want to wait until the heat has broken because it doesn't like to germinate when it's really hot. Um, so mosh, you're going to plant closer to four weeks before your first frost and then you can plant right up until your frost date. Um, if you're looking for seeds for mosh, some seed companies call it mosh. Other seed companies call it corn salad. I did see that we had a few European viewers here. If you, if you live in Europe, it may be called lamb's lettuce. Okay? Um, it's, mosh is actually native to the Mediterranean, um, south of France and, and things like that. It's, it's kind of a weed. And uh, it, it, will, it will do really well in the cold temperatures and the low light of fall and early winter. So great one to look up. You've got some time to get some seeds ordered there. Um, lots of different companies carry mosh. Again, mosh, corn salad, or lamb's lettuce is how you will see that one. With all of the leafy greens, though, you do have more flexibility. I have planted, like for example, spinach. I planted spinach as close to about two weeks before my first frost, so middle of September, and still had baby spinach uh, that I could grow. Uh, the The longer you know, the longer your your fall is, and the later those frosts arrive, the the more chance you're going to have at getting those guys to to grow and to do well. Okay. All right, so wow, look at that, guys. We're almost at 200 viewers. That's awesome. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to take a drink and then we'll move on to our last group. All right. Uh, yeah, Toronto, you're going to be you're going to be struggling with those root crops, but you should still be able to get plenty of leafy greens going. Okay, um, here we go. Last group of crops that we can plant. Now, you need to hurry on the brassica family. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and kohlrabi, okay? And only by transplants this time of year. For zones four through seven, you're, you're going to be putting transplants in. So if you don't already have transplants going, I, I have transplants that I started myself out in the garage. I've got about 16 broccoli plants that we're gonna be putting in. And uh, those have been going for about five or six weeks. As soon as this heat breaks, I'm going to put them out, but I'm, I'm going to wait until after these 100 degree temperatures go. But it's too late to try and plant by seed. Um, probably even, I, I would say even if you were in like zone 8 and 9, you, you're probably better off to do transplants, okay? So how do you source transplants this time of year if, you're, if you haven't already grown them yourself? You need to go to like a local nursery. I'm not talking about a big box store. No Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those places are not going to be carrying this kind of stuff in the fall. If you go to some of your farm store nurseries or your local nursery specialty places, they may be carrying broccoli and cabbage especially this time of year. Um, if they aren't, you can ask them because they're still receiving shipments of plants. They're getting fall plants in right now, mums and pansies and things like that. And so you can ask, a lot of the growers will have a few trays of these type of plants around. And so if you ask, they'll bring them in for you. So if you, if you don't have starts going yourself, then go ahead and go ask your nurseries. You gotta be a little aggressive with them and say, hey, I want these, but I, there's Here in Utah, there's a whole group of people that have really kind of started getting into this fall gardening and almost all of the local nurseries now will carry some fall crops um, for us. And so if you guys can go out there and rattle our cages a little bit, you ought to be able to find some. Another thing is you might find some at some of the farmer, farmer's markets too because a lot of those farmers recognize that there's people out there that, that would like to do this and so they'll grow some starts for you there as well. So I did notice we were at our farmers market here in Salt Lake over the weekend, the one downtown, and I did notice that they had some some herbs and some kale and things like that that, that some people were selling there as well. So look for those to source those. But again, this time of year, if you don't put them in by transplant, they're not gonna mature in time, okay? So we wanna try and set them out about four weeks before our first frost date if the heat has broken okay so we, we the thing we don't want to do is put our broccoli starts out when it's still a hundred degrees um, so wait until that that heat has broken a little bit 
but there's a really kind of how do I describe it? There's kind of a sweet spot we're looking for here because you, you want to make sure you get them in. We need to get them in fairly quickly. We don't want them to get killed in that super hot and have them um, bolt and go to seed. But at the same time, as soon as that heat starts to break, you need to get those guys in. Okay, um, and, and you should still be able to have a nice broccoli, ca broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and kohlrabi should all do really well Okay, this time of year um, as well. Okay, Now, if you would like to, uh, to, to extend your growing season a little bit, uh, there's some fun things that you can do. And uh, in the summertime, we teach a whole class on this, and, and that's not what this, this is about. But there are three different things that, that you guys could be doing with these crops that you're planting right now that will help to protect them and keep them going later into the winter. Okay, So we have heavy fabric row covers mini hoop houses and cold frames that you can use to extend your growing season. Heavy fabric row covers, first off, um, when if, if you're going to order, if you don't already have some and you're going to order some heavy fabric row covers, here's what you're looking for. So you need to be looking in the description. It should say that there is frost protection to six to eight degrees okay, of frost protection, or it may say protects down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Celsius, that's going to be maybe 8 or 10, uh, negative 8 or 10 uh, that it will protect too. Uh, so we're looking for that, you know, 6 to 8 degrees of frost protection. If they, if it's describing by weight, sometimes in those those fabric row covers, they will describe it by weight and, and it'll, it'll say ounces per square foot. And so you're looking for row covers that have 1.25 to 1.5 or better um, ounces per square foot uh, in, in that measurement. So that would make it a heavy fabric row cover and that is going to give you the frost protection that you need to protect your crops and extend your growing season Okay, with heavy fabric row covers. And everybody should have some heavy fabric row covers in my opinion. Uh, I've saved my tomatoes from early frosts so many times. Uh, using a, a fabric row, row cover and then it's just great for protecting your broccoli and your your spinach and your lettuce and all those kind of things that's just really super good to have and so I would recommend you get some of that mini hoop houses are a little bit um, higher level of protection very easy to make you can just put some some PVC pipe uh, over your raised beds or if you're plant doing it directly out in the garden you might have to put some rebar or something in first and then put the bend that those PVC pipes over that throw some plastic over just some painters plastic it doesn't have to be fancy can just be like um, three mil three or four mil plastic is is probably going to be enough uh, that should last for you know two or three years and you can just create a little mini hoop house like that that is going to automatically extend your growing season about six weeks uh, so so if you normally are you know pretty much everything's dying about the first of November you're going to be middle of December before everything really freezes hard and if you really want to up your game with your your fall garden then you can get a cold frame and this picture is a picture of me in front of my cold frame in January with about six inches of snow and we still had crops that were growing only your hardiest crops are going to grow that time of year things like kale spinach mosh um, tot soy collards uh, Swiss chard those will all continue to grow carrots would, would continue to grow in a cold frame and uh, you're, you're basically going to be using the cold frames to protect them. Um, we're planting them now and then we can continue to harvest from them over the winter in those cold frames. And a cold frame is essentially a box, usually with wooden sides, with some type of glass top. So it could be a pre-built glass top like the ones I have or you could just use old storm windows, old storm doors, you know, anything like that uh, as a top so that you can still get some light in there but it's protected um, from the elements and so that is another great way that you can be um, preserving your crops and extending that harvest okay uh, and and you're definitely anything that you're going to be planting this time of year if you really want to get an extended harvest then you definitely need to be thinking about you know adding some of these things okay all right a um, couple more things that I just wanted to um, emphasize again it's getting late for most of us in zones four, five, six, and seven. Uh, and I know it's still hot, 
but we have to get these plants going. We have to baby them and get them moving or we're not gonna have a decent harvest in the fall because we're gonna run out of sunlight because the key is the sunlight and the, the length of our days is getting shorter and shorter and so our plants are gonna stop growing if we don't get them in. So hurry, early September is when you should be planting all of these crops, okay? Um, also, I would encourage you to use some germination helpers. Um, burlap is a great example. In fact, I did, if you guys want to go look in my videos just last week, um, so it was last Thursday's video, was on using burlap to help get your crops to germinate quicker. Uh, you need to use something like burlap or a light fabric row cover, something that will help to shade those plants and get them to germinate quickly because we don't want them sitting around for two or three weeks. We want them up and going as quick as we can. So use some type of germination helper and make sure that you, you know, you're gonna baby these crops. The, the first few weeks while it's still hot, you're really gonna have to take care of them. You're gonna have to water them often and, and just baby them along until the weather starts to cool off a little bit and they get a chance to take hold, okay? And then the last recommendation that I would give you is a lot of the crops that we talked about here, normally we would consider them shade, okay to plant in the shade. Um, so we would think, oh, it's all right, you know, lettuce does okay in a shady spot or, or, you know, kale does all right in a shady spot, but not this time of year, okay? That's, that's in the spring and the summer. This time of year, we want to plant these crops in the maximum sunshiniest spot that you can find in your garden that isn't already full of something else, okay? Because I recognize we, we still have our tomatoes and our squash and all that kind of stuff that's in our gardens right now, but find the sunniest spot you can because, again, we need all the sunshine that we can possibly come up with to make sure that these crops develop well during the fall, especially when we're planting this late, okay? So, and then next year, plant all these same crops on August 1st also, and you'll, you'll be in much better shape. So, um, okay. Uh, so I think that is probably it for what I wanted to teach you guys. We're doing pretty good, 25 minutes. Um, let me just really quickly, I did want to talk to you just really quick about the Gardening Academy, uh, and I'm, uh, let me turn myself off here for a second. Uh, the Gardening Academy is our monthly membership service, and I did want to let you guys know that we do have currently have a 14-day free trial offer for that. So the Gardening Academy has just a ton of stuff to teach you how to be a better gardener, uh, full of awesome stuff. We've got the Gardening Foundation course, which is a six-module course that covers where to plant, when to plant, what to plant, watering, pest control, and weed control. Great course. Then we have every month I do a new mini course, which means we have over 30 mini courses that are available for you to watch on just a, a huge variety of topics. Um, new one every month. And then I also do a live Q&A call. And it's not like this. It's actually a Zoom call with all of the group members. And uh, it gives you a chance to interact with me a little bit better. So 14-day um, free trial right now. There is a link down in the description of this video that you can click on. That will take you over and you can sign up for that free trial. And then after that, it's uh, $25 a month is the cost. Fall and winter are the perfect time to join the Gardening Academy because here in another six weeks or so, you're not going to have anything to do. And so let's learn more about gardening and we'll learn together and, and I'll teach you guys more about how to garden uh, during the winter time. So spend the cold winter months learning how to grow a better garden and try it out for free. So I will warn you though, um, 65% of the people that join the Gardening Academy in the trial end up staying um, because they like it so much. So this is a good opportunity for you to kick the tires, see what the Gardening Academy is like. So click on the link down below, okay? All right, um, enough salesmanship, sorry. I always feel awkward doing the selling thing. Um, let's do our prize winners, okay? So again, thank you to our sponsors. The Gardening Academy is one of those, but also Honest Seed Company who gave us some gift certificates. And so here are our winners. Is what I did is we had 158 people that signed up to win. I put their names into a random number generator and it spit out these three winters. So Ali Ramos, uh, Morris Jet, Jet, 
and Lori Eisenhard are our winners. So Allie and Morris won the gift certificates from Honest Seed Company, and Lori won, won the row cover. I will contact you guys directly and let you know that you have, have won. Um, so don't worry about emailing me. I'll email you. That way I know that I'm actually getting the person and, and that, that I'm not um, getting somebody that's trying to, to cheat. Okay. So congratulations, guys. That's awesome. And again, thank you to Honest Seed Company. They have just been awesome this year. They've literally given us like two or three hundred dollars worth of, of gift certificates to give away. So I really appreciate um, them and uh, they're an awesome company. Link in the description for them as well. So go check them out. They have a lot of great stuff over there. So really, really cool. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at questions. Um, and I'm going to have to refresh my other computer here. There we go. <laughs> Panicked for a second because my little thing went blank. Let's see. Let's move on. So questions. So we're at about 30 minutes. Um, I am willing to, to do however long you guys want on getting these questions answered. So we'll kind of go through. And some people, it looks like we already have five questions that have been submitted. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and drop your, your questions into the chat, my wife AJ will pop them up in order and we'll, we'll get them answered for you. I'm going to take another drink first, though. OK. Wow, guys, awesome. 168 people still here. That is cool. Even after I tried to sell you something. That's awesome. Thanks for staying. Um, all right, so let's start with Erica Lewis's question. Um, from seeds or indoors, you know what? I, I, am, I should have been more clear on that. I apologize. So with the broccoli family, um, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kohlrabi, it needs to be transport, transplant. So start it indoors. Um, everything else, you still actually have time to plant them by seed, okay? So you can plant them directly out in the garden. So all the leafy greens, the root crops, those can be planted directly in the garden. If you happen to have transplants, that's an even better situation, you know, because they're further along. But if, you know, all of those can be planted directly by seed. So the leafy greens and the root crops directly by seed. The, the brassica family, those do need to be by transplants, okay? Um, what about garlic? Okay, Rodney, great question. Rodney, that completely and totally depends on where you live. Um, so uh, normally we plant garlic a few weeks after our first frost. Most of us are not having our first frost in September. If you live in zones three and four, possibly you might be having your first frost in September. But um, my preference is to wait on planting your garlic. So. I, I'm going to encourage you to, to give it at least two weeks after your first frost date. You could actually, the, the, the zone that you should be planting your garlic in is any time from your last frost date up until when the ground actually freezes. So we've got this, this you know, zone. So like for me, we'll usually have our first frost the first part of October, then it kind of warms up again and we'll, middle of October we'll have another frost. But our ground doesn't really freeze until almost Thanksgiving, US Thanksgiving, so like the last week of November. So I've got that whole range from about mid-October to mid-November that I can plant my garlic. And so I usually wait until the first part of November for me. Again, it's totally gonna depend on where you live, but we wanna wait until it's cooled off and because is what we want with the garlic is we want it to just start its root development. We don't want it to put up tops before the cold weather comes. Okay, so so we we want root development, but no tops, uh, if if at all possible. It's not the absolute end of the world if you get tops growing, but um, it's better if we don't. If the if if we wait and get the tops growing early in the spring. So wait until you know two, three, four weeks after your first frost, and then put them in. But make sure you do it before you know you get a really hard cold freeze. You know when you start having nights in the low twenties Fahrenheit. Um, and that would be Celsius, that's going to be, you know, down negative 10, negative 15. Then your ground's going to start freezing. And so we want to we want to plant it before then, but wait a little bit until the weather has cooled off considerably, okay? All right, um, Jeremy is asking, do I know a local one in the Salt Lake Valley? Um, 
Local. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I, I get you. So local in the Salt Lake Valley. So for the, those of you that don't know, I, I live in uh, the southern part of the Salt Lake Valley in Utah. And Jeremy's asking uh, local nurseries. Okay. So, so local nurseries for you, Jeremy, would be um, Smith's uh, in West Jordan and um, Glover, both in West Jordan. Uh, they sell them. So Smith's is on Redwood Road, Glover is on 13th, they're both about 90th South, 95th South. Um, both of those do sell uh, the, the, the uh, fall seedlings. Um, Ka I can never say it right. Um, they're in Sandy, it's Kawahara. Um, they have one in Draper and they have one in Sandy. Um, both of those, they usually carry them as well. So those are good places to look. And then any of the other you know, uh, areas as well. Uh, the nurseries, the, 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 the traditional nurseries, you know, are, are going to carry those. Um, okay. Um, what if the company sends brassica starts and, and it's still in the 90s? Um, hopefully they're in containers big enough. So this is Ellie's question. Hopefully they're in containers that are big enough that you can, that they're not getting root bound yet. Um, so carefully pull them out and see what the condition of the roots are. If they're not root bound in that container yet, leave them. Don't plant them yet, okay? If they are getting root bound, you might have to pot them up into a larger pot uh, because we don't want them to get root bound, but if it's in the 90s, we still don't, we don't want them out there. Once it, once it kind of drops into the 80s, then you're gonna be okay. Um, one thing years ago that, that one of my local nursery people suggested to me too is when you plant in the warmer weather, um, dig your hole, fill it full of water and let that water drain out first, then put your start in and then cover it up and water it again. That will help as well. So, but yeah, um, try and wait. If you, if, even if you have to pot them up into a larger pot, um, you might want to do that if it's still in the 90s, okay? Um, okay, Rico. Do I understand correctly that I should wait until the temperatures get into a pattern of the 80s and 90s during the daytime? Yes, yes, that's a, that's a good analysis. Um, thank you for, for that. Um, okay, uh, Kylie, Kylie is part of our uh, gardening academy, welcome. Um, can I grow lettuce through the winter in a cold frame? Um, so yes, depends on where you live. Um, so lettuce is one of the more tender crops and so uh, you're, if you live in zones four, five, and even zone, so I live in zone six, and we have a hard time getting lettuce to make it through the winter in zone six, e in a, even in a cold frame. Because it is what happens is lettuce, lettuce will last until about Christmas for us, but that freeze thaw, freeze thaw, freeze thaw cycle that happens in the early winter is really rough on lettuce. And so eventually it's, it gives out. Whereas spinach and spinach and kale and arugula and Swiss chard, they don't mind that freeze thaw, freeze thaw. The lettuce eventually is going to give out from you know being frozen and then thawing out and over and over again. So, if you live in zone seven or above, you probably will be able to harvest uh, lettuce all winter long. Six and below, it, it probably is going to get too cold uh, starting you know mid to late December for your lettuce to, to ultimately hold out. Okay. All right, Anne is asking, can you still can can you plant in containers still? Yes, absolutely. The only struggle you're going to have with containers is they're going to freeze faster than than the ground is going to freeze. And so, uh, as your really cold weather starts to arrive, and I'm talking here, you know, mid November, uh, before you really need to worry about this, but you might want to think about protecting those somehow. Maybe some put some straw bales around them or something like that. Eventually in the winter time, they're gonna give out. Um, but you could get, you can do plenty of fall gardening in containers and, and not have any issues at all, okay? Um, what about garlic? We talked, so we went through and talked about garlic plants. Um, how about watering garlic? Um, I failed to water it enough. So hopefully you're, you're getting a decent amount of weather. Um, you don't, in the fall, you don't really need to, to worry about watering your garlic. Um, you're, you know, you should get enough rain and, and you're going to, again, all we really want is a little bit of root development. That's why we wait a little bit later in the year on that garlic. And so I don't usually mess with it in the fall. It's going to get enough snow and rain through the winter. 
As soon as things start to dry out though in the spring, you do need to start paying attention to watering, okay? And fertilizer. Garlic likes fertilizer. I don't fertilize a lot of crops in my garden just because my, my, I take good care of my soil. But garlic, onions, and corn I do fertilize. And so you, you may want to consider an early spring application of fertilizer. And then, you know, once the, the weather starts to, weather pattern starts to become dry again, you definitely are going to want to make sure that those are getting, you know, somewhere between one to two inches of water a week, okay? All right, Cindy, can you use row covers on containers to extend them? Yes, you can, definitely. Again, because containers are, there's they're, they're so little soil volume involved, um, they're going to freeze faster. Um, but you should, you know, I mean, you should be able to get, you could plant stuff now in containers and, and have a harvest through the middle of November in most places. You know, in the warmer zones, you know, seven, eight, nine, um, obviously you'll, you'll, you'll be able to go in eight and nine for sure all the way through the winter. Seven, um, probably not all the way through the winter, but even later through, you know, later in the fall. So fabric row covers will definitely help. Um, if you've got a nice day outside, um, I would take them off and then just cover them at night. Uh, but eventually, because they're out of the ground, they're sitting on, you know, they might be sitting on a deck or on concrete or, you know, whatever. They're, they're, go they're going to be exposed to the elements too much to not freeze and eventually kill your plants. But, um, you'll, you know, you should still be able to extend that growing season well into mid-November, okay? Um, for the brassicas, should we wait until the averages are in the, the 80s? Yes, uh, if you can. Um, but you, you also need to, you know, I mean, I'm not going to let mine go any more than two weeks. So I, I, I just really hope it cools off. It's, it's been so hot this year. Um, but it's got to give up some sooner or later, I hope. You know, but we are having hundreds again this weekend. The first and second of September are supposed to be a hundred. So um, if, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wait any more than maybe three weeks before your first frost, unless it's just outrageously hot. Um, it, but you, you do need to try and get them in the ground because they need to start growing. They're not going to grow much more in those containers, and so you need to get them in the ground so that they can grow and you can get your buds or your cabbage, you know, coming along. So, uh, but try to wait till, till you've got temperatures in the 80s. Um, if it gets hot again, if you get them planted and then all of a sudden it jumps back up into the 90s, you might want to consider some shade cloth um, for a few days uh, to, to help them. Um, okay, uh, Ruth. Uh, white striped eggplant, how to cook. I hate eggplant. <laughs> we tried. We tried to like it. We, we grew it for a couple of years and we just don't like it. So I don't have any recipes for you. I'm sorry. Maybe some other people can give you some recommendations. Um, I, I don't like eggplant and so I don't have any recommendations for you because we just, we couldn't like it. We tried and every recipe we tried we don't like. So I'm um, sorry. Uh, okay. What website can you use to find an accurate zone? So I do have a link on my, uh, there's, a, there's an article on my website. So if you go to our Stony Acres uh, and then just go, what's my garden zone? Uh, that, that actually is just an article about garden zones, but it has links to the USDA website and the Canadian website. And there's even a European website as well. And there's some conversion tables and things like that. So that actually going to the either the Canadian uh, or the USDA website is going to be your best choice. Um, and then you put in your zip code and it will zoom in and, and it's a map and it's one of those, you know, I mean, it's, it's a color gradient map and so it's a little bit hard, but you should be able to put your zip code in and it will zoom in on your town and then you can, you can go and see what zone. It will tell you what zone that you're in on there. That's the best place to go because that's where it's all based off of is the USDA website. Anything else is not, um, they're, they're somehow funneling the information from those websites, okay? Um, can you grow winter crops in a small greenhouse? Absolutely. So a, a greenhouse is going to work just like a cold frame, essentially. Um, sometimes they don't offer as much protection. It depends on what type of glass they have. Uh, they're higher profile. But yeah, uh, you should be able to grow any of these crops that we've talked about, um, Gail. 
today you could be planting in your your greenhouse now obviously it's hot so so you need to you're going to totally have your greenhouse open so that it's venting because we don't want it to be 120 degrees inside that greenhouse right now but you could plant stuff in that greenhouse now um, or you could start some things indoors and move them out when it cools off whatever but yeah greenhouse you should be able to do really well with all of the crops that we talked about here if you want to do warm season crops that's a whole other story you've got to heat the greenhouse and everything but cool season crops will do really well over the winter in a greenhouse okay um, can I freeze kale like turnip greens? Um, I've never tried it, but the answer is yes. Uh, just like you would do uh, turnip greens or uh, spinach, uh, any of those, uh, you, you can definitely freeze them. Um, you probably are going to want to blanch them first, and I'm going to direct you to the USDA uh, website, and, and they'll have a freezing guide on leafy greens there. Uh, but I'm, I'm imagining that probably the safest thing to do and the thing that's going to make them last the longest is to blanch them first. Um, so, so check that out. But yes, you definitely can freeze kale just like you, you do any of the other greens. Um, and it will actually make it taste better. Uh, freezing it will make it sweeten it up. Um, okay, some asparagus crowns. I planted some asparagus. This is Doug. I planted some asparagus crowns for the first time and they were two years old. Will I get asparagus next spring? And what about winter preparation? Okay, so Doug, a good question. No, you you won't. If you if you planted them just this year, you'll get ferns growing like you probably did this year. But I would wait. You, I mean, you could maybe cheat and have a couple of spears of of asparagus, but. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to wait until the, the next year, so the third year in the ground, before you really start to harvest because you want those plants to get established. Um, so maybe you might steal one or two out of that, that crop, but ultimately you need those crowns to start spreading and developing so that the next year they, they give you a whole bunch. Asparagus is a long-term game. It's going to be there for 20 plus years. And so you just have to be a little bit patient. So I would, I would probably say, unless there's just this beautiful spear that you really, really want to cut and eat, I would probably say that you should wait next year as well. And then winter preparation, uh, about all you need to do is just mulch that bed. So, so put you know a good solid two or three inches of uh, straw or uh, you know chopped up leaves is a great option. Um, compost uh, if it's the problem with compost as a mulch in the winter is it might blow away but um, you know anything like that just just put you know a good solid three to four inches of mulch on top and, and that's all you need to do winter prep wise okay all right um, let me gotten down there. there we go okay Jocelyn says if we wanted to grow cold colder varieties of peas and beans for fall harvest when would we get those out asking for next year's zone five okay uh, there's so beans. I'm assuming you're probably talking here about like a lima bean or or um, something like that. Traditional green beans are not a cool season crop, and they're not going to do well in the fall. Uh, peas, you're going to want to to plant those somewhere between 10 to 12 weeks before your first frost date. Here's the problem with peas. Peas are frost. The plants themselves are frost tolerant. Um, they, they do really well with frost, but the peas on the plant actually aren't frost tolerant. And so you have to get in the fall, you have to get them to mature before the freezing weather shows up because they, they might handle one or two light frosts, but as soon as it starts to get cold, those, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin those pods. Um, so we have to do the timing such that you're, you're maturing about the time your frost comes which means we never are going to have as good of a, a crop of peas in the fall as we will in the winter for those of us that live in the cold zones. For those of you that live in the warmer zones that, that don't get frost, you'll, you should have a great winter crop of peas. But for those of us that live in the, the cold zones, um, your fall crop is never going to be as good as your spring crop just because they're, they're maturing in that heat um, and it's not the right time of year. You know, but it's fun to do and we we have some i've i've got uh, not a ton but i've got a, a you know eight or ten plants growing right now um that are up about that big four inches um and so we'll see 
how they do. And I, I've, I've done it over the years. I've probably done fall peas maybe six or seven times. And it's never been amazing. But, we, you know, it's fun to have some. And, and one thing that you could do is choose to do like snow peas or sugar snap peas. Don't do the potting, the English peas, um, the shelling peas. Because then, you know, if cold weather arrives, those snow peas and those sugar snap peas, you could just harvest and you can still eat them. Um, whereas the shelling peas have to wait until they're fully developed to eat. Okay. All right. Um, Laura, I want to know how to, how and when to grow lemon Meyer, or Meyer's lemons um, from your mom's beautiful tree. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to have to refer you someplace else on that one, Laura. I'm sorry, but... Um, we live here in Utah. Citrus is not a thing, and 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 so I I have like that much experience with with citrus, and so I I really can't help you. I know that some people in colder areas will grow some of those mini, and and that's on my list someday to grow a mini lemon tree. But you have to bring them inside if you live in a cold area, but hot area I I can't help you. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. So unfortunately, I'm not the right person to ask on that one. Um, Callie is asking, so many of my tomatoes are still green. Will shade cloth help? High 90s here in zone 5A. Um, okay, so Callie, I would say that you probably need to do a couple of different things with your tomatoes this time of year. First thing I would do is top the plants. So we wanna stop the growth. We don't want any more growing. Um, we want it to stop growing and focus on ripening that fruit. So find the ends, the tops of your plants and cut them off, okay? That will, that will help to stop. And then you need to stress them out a little bit. And so you might want to go ahead and not water them for a little while. Give them a little time without water. Uh, that will stress the plants out and that will force them to start ripening that fruit. So we need to, we need to create a stressful environment that will help the, the plant to go, oh crap, I gotta hurry up and get these, these fruit ripened so that I can reproduce. Um, so, so trim them so they quit growing and then they'll focus more on, on ripening that fruit and then stress them out. Stop watering them for a while if you can. Um, and just because I say that, it'll rain for two weeks on you. But if you can, try to stress them out by not watering them and that should help to um, get those to start ripening, okay? Um, will green beans planted now produce in zone nine? Yes you should be able to get those to, to produce in zone nine because your frost, if you have frost, is gonna be late in December um, so or January maybe even. And so you should, you, know, you should be able to in zone five, no problem to get a second planting of, of beans going. Um, Dame, how about potatoes in zone 6B? Too late for potatoes to develop this year some people do fall plantings of potatoes and um, there is some merit to that idea uh, but potatoes are fairly cold sensitive um, so if, if you wanted to try some fall potatoes the, the biggest problem is finding seed um, if you grew your own then you might be able to get some but you could plant them now you would want to wait not now you'd want to wait until later because you know you we the thing we don't want is growth right now we want them to be in the ground and we want them to come up in the spring so you could overwinter them that way but we don't want the plants to actually grow this time of the year because they'll freeze the tops will freeze completely uh when when it gets too cold so um you could look up there 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 are several people that talk about that um about growing uh potatoes overwintering potatoes it's not something that i've done other than with just volunteer potatoes but um, you know, it's definitely a possibility if you wanted to do that. That would just essentially get you an earlier spring harvest. Um, and it, that kind of depends on how cold it gets in your area too. Um, did you say uh, 6B? Yeah, you probably in 6B, that's similar to us. You, you would probably have some success there, okay? All right, Erica is asking, how are we doing on time? We're at 53 minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably call it quits here pretty soon just to honor your guys' time, but let me see what we can do about getting a few more of these questions answered for you because we still have 160 people. Wow, 158 people, guys. Thanks for staying. Um, okay, Erica, have you ever tried um, parent, parent carpy seeds? And if so, what has your experience been? Sorry, I haven't. That's not one that I have any experience with. I apologize. 
Um, in fact, I don't even know what they are. So, um, yeah, I don't have any experience on that one. Sorry. Um, Ellie, do you need to cut back asparagus in the fall? Um, next year is year three for me. Yes. So, Ellie, is what you want to do is wait and let those, those ferns are going to die back. You want them to draw the energy so, so those, those ferns will die and they'll draw that energy back into the crown and then you can cut them off. Okay, so not now. Uh, you're going to wait until probably after your frost and once those tops have died back, then you can go ahead and clean them up and, and then mulch your beds that way. Okay. Um, when should you top your tomatoes? Your frost date is October 15th and most of mine are green. Um, about now really you're 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 about to the stage where you know any tomatoes that set fruit now are probably not going to grow i maybe you know maybe another week or so week to 10 days you know maybe the the second week of september because tomatoes usually take about 4 weeks to develop and so you know anything that sets after that is not going to develop in time you know before you lose the, the plant to frost so maybe give it another week to 10 days and then you could top that plant that will stop it from setting any more fruit and it'll focus on on ripening the fruit that you have um, how do we how do you stop scots on potato paulette send me an email about that because i'm I'm not sure what Scots is, and so we may have a different name for it in our area. So um, send me an email on that, and we'll see if we can can get you dig, dig you up an answer on that. Okay. Um, all right. Not more. Do you think planting fruit and nut trees is better planted in the fall or the spring? Either one is okay. The biggest struggle you're going to have in the fall is finding good quality plants to to start. Um, most of the the nurseries are going to be out of variety, you know. So so if you can find like an online grower that's still selling this time of year, fall would be great. Um, wait until the heat breaks so that you're not planting that tree and stressing it out when it's you know 100 degrees. But once it's back into the 80s, you could plant in the fall if you wanted, if you can find good plants and and, and a good selection. But early in the spring is perfectly fine too. Um, either one is, is going to be fine. Fall just gives the plants a little bit more time for root development. But again, you're going to have a harder time finding quality and variety this time of year. So you may end up just waiting till spring just because the, you know, the, the varieties that you want are not available. Um, or like if you're buying from a nursery, you know, those plants have been sitting around in a container all summer. Uh, they may not be that great in that great a condition anyway. So see if you you know if you can find a, a grower online that that has them then then you could definitely you know get some new starts uh, you know some newer plants that have just been harvested and 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 you know use those in the fall but otherwise spring is fine there's nothing wrong with spring it doesn't matter with fruit and nut trees you're going to be five years depending on the tree before you get a harvest anyways um, happy grands garden says when should i transplant brassica seedlings in the garden outside in zone 7b it's the high 90s all this week. Wait until it gets into the 80s, um, if you can. Um, and again, it kind of depends on what your transplants are doing and how root bound they are. Um, I would prefer to have already had mine in, but mine are not in yet because it's so hot. So yeah, wait as long as you can. And then Tessa is saying raspberries better plant transplanted in the fall or in the spring. Same answer as I as I gave on the fruit trees. If you can find starts fall is a good time um, that will kind of help with fruit production next year because the the plant will be more established and so you'll get a little bit more fruit production um, but again it's not the end of the world either way you know early spring late fall you will get a little more root development in the fall and maybe an overall better plant but you're going to have a hard time finding them uh, you know this time of year so if you can find them, fall would be fine, but uh, you may just have to wait till the spring. Okay? All right. Thanks, Tessa. Okay, guys, this was awesome. Look at this. 150 people still here. That is awesome. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, let's see. Yeah.
Okay, I think we'll call it quits, guys. We're, we're at, at an hour right now, and that's, that's actually 15 minutes longer than I expected. You guys had a lot of great questions, so thank you for that. Scab. Okay, Paulette, that makes sense. Scab. I, we had it... We had it different. Okay, so scab is a is a, a soil borne disease. We need we need to we need more time than this. So again, Paulette, email me. I'll get you some information on that. Um, so I, I think we we better hold off on that one just because it's uh, that's that's a, a pretty involved answer. So um, okay, guys, thank you. This is awesome. Don't forget to go try out the Gardening Academy. Link down in the description below. And go please support Honest Seed Company. Uh, they were our sponsor for this video, and that is awesome for them to do that. So um, make sure that you subscribe to both of those. Subscribe to my channel. Go follow us on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Thank you. I think I'm probably going to try and do these um, once a month. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll, we'll do it again next month towards the end of, of October, and maybe we'll do one um, in November and December and, and see how things go. So keep an eye out for that, and uh, thanks. Appreciate you guys being here. You're awesome. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Happy gardening.